Hello, Mary. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> I've dreamed of... <sighs> I woke up this morning. I was crying. I said to myself, what are you bawling about? It's here, it's today. I felt so stupid talking to the walls. You talk too much. I always did. Don't I get a kiss? I've been kissing you for seven years. Your photo and the rosary from the wedding and... What about Mike. me? Don't I get a kiss? Me, himself. <sighs> oh, I love you, I love you. Again. I love you. No, I mean a kiss again. Wait till we get home. Come on, let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. Hey, don't let him see you. No, it means if you hit it, then he'll never come back. Hit it, then. <laughs> ah! You hit it. Were you worried I wouldn't? No. You won't worry about anything anymore, will you? No, no, Jimmy. The worry's over. The boy, you and me, we'll go to the country in a few days. Up to the shack. We'll be safe there. Yes. Because they can't find us there. Mind you, they'll be looking, but they can't find us. Who, Jimmy? The police. Jimmy, I... Mary, I take care of the three men that put me in there. I mean, they gotta look. Three men? What three men? The three men I'm going to have to kill. Doesn't anybody here understand English? I'm American. I never touch this stuff. <laughs> Besides, I had a gargantuan lunch in a pub over from the Old Bailey. Had an eminent lawyer with each course. Hello, my dear strange, and how are things with you? It's enough for any man to swallow in a day. You eat prosecuting attorneys, do you? Uh -huh. I thought you merely intimidated them. Mm. <laughs> go on. Go on. Go off, both of you. I'm going to stay here and look at the television and make myself a sandwich when I'm ready and have a jolly nice quiet evening. But listen, Adam, it's the opening of the most newest and the most swinging Chinese restaurant in the whole of London. And I'm entitled to three free dinners from wonton soup to lychee nuts. Entitled? How come? Well, didn't she tell you she was commissioned by the misguided management to design the menus? In the shape of Chinese pagodas. Nothing so boringly obvious. Obi, sash-like, like that. Do you mind? Oh, it's very clever. You do know, don't you, that uh, Obi's happen to be Japanese? I saw. Well, in that case, we'll have to eat and run before they find out. Oh, come on, Adam, come no, with this. Go on, I don't want it. to. Rotten, oh. boring old anti-social... Oh, get out! What's the matter? Do I know? I don't know, do you? No, I guess not. on that thing again. I thought you were going to treat me to a carriage for a change. What a taxi fat chance. Get out. But listen, Ham, this hairdo took four hours to do. It's going to get blown to bits on the bike. Yeah, use the Obi. That's ridiculous. I feel as though I've got a toothache. Look, I'll pay for the cab. OK. You'd let me too, wouldn't you? <laughs> Miser, cheapskate. Ah!
Why, Jenna. Hello, strange. Come in, man. Come in. Let's see. The uh, last I heard, you'd been promoted. What is it? Chief superintendent? Uh, not to Tilbury Lowe. I'm a detective inspector. Oh, good. Well, congratulations anyway. Have a drink. No, thank you. Fine. Right. Not on duty, that sort of thing? That's right. I bet you could use a short one, though, couldn't you? Duty or no? <laughs> if you have one. Well, of course I will. Scotch? Fine. Well, what's up? Well, there was a robbery tonight that involves you. Me? Huh? We're not sure. Not unless you know the name of someone who'd like to see you dead. Well, there's my cleaning lady, of course. Fragile as a fly outwardly and a walking grin, but I suspect when she comes in here on Mondays and Thursdays and looks around at the mess... Strange. I've been mixed up with crime and criminals the best part of my life. I'm sure there's quite a few of them. I'd be delighted to see me eliminated. Now, come on, tell me what it's all about. There was a break-in in, in Lambeth earlier this evening at a gunsmith's. It was a quick, well-executed job by someone who knew what he was looking for. Which was a gun? A gun. And ammunition, which he exchanged for this note. First one, then two, then you, Adam Strange. Cheers. Cheers. Fingerprints? Negative. He obviously wore gloves. Looks like an ordinary ballpoint, doesn't it? Cheap common garden paper. Well-executed job, you say? Someone who knows the ropes. Well, could have been a prank or... Could be. A mental case trying to upset me mentally. Possibly. Check the prisons. Anyone released or escaped lately who might know me and not like what they know. <laughs> We're checking, of course, but it only happened a short while ago. Well, then we should know soon enough. Yes, but uh, until we do... We'd appreciate it if you'd allow us to uh, place you in a sort of protective custody. Sort of? Why are you being so choosy with your words, Jenna? Because we figure the answer is no. No is right. This isn't the first of these little love letters I've had. I admit I never get used to them, but at least I've learned to take them with a grain of salt or a drink. Come on, let me fill you up. Sir, if you feel I'm wasting your time... No, of course not. He stole a gun, strange ammunition. The man is armed. All right, so what are you suggesting? That I arm myself? I've not carried a gun since the war. I don't intend to carry one again. Now, there are two other people mentioned here. They're the ones you've got to worry about, not me. I'm warned. Oh, just that walking. Bought a bottle of wine. Oh, lovely. I went back to the flat while you were out. Why? Oh, to pick up a few things and to pay Mrs. Rogers for that last week I was there. You didn't tell her where we were? No. Are you hungry, man? Hmm. I uh, picked up one or two tins while I was there as well. What have you got? Corried beans with sultanas. Sultanas? What are they? I don't know. I've never tried them. They sound special, sort of far away. <laughs> Shall we try them? Well. Well, look, I can't make a roast or anything. Well, it doesn't really it. matter. I'm not hungry. I know it's these two letters in the box at the flat. Oh, yeah? What do they say? Well, this one's from the man who set you up with that job. He looks forward to seeing you first thing on Monday morning. What's the other one, sir? And then, uh, oh, it's from the school from Michael. And he says he's going Is to start... Is it? Or well, read it to me. Dear Daddy, welcome home to England. Mum says you were going to bring me something from South America. Hmm. What? If you brung two things... Brung? If you brung two things, I'd like to give one to my mate, Bill. <laughs> he scribbles terrible, doesn't he? It's like his father. <laughs> uh, he's my very best mate. His father has been working away a long time, too. Oh, dear. He says, I'm lucky I'll be seeing you soon. He says he doesn't think you'll ever see his father. Best regards <laughs> from your son, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. P.S. Don't worry if you only brung one thing. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, can't we pick him up tomorrow? A few days. A few days more. A few days? Don't you long to see him? He used to feel him when he was inside me, kicking and moving. Don't you want to know what he looks like? I said in a few days. Why do we have to wait? I told you why. Yes, I knew, but you didn't mean that. Did you? Give it to me, Mary. Now, give it to me.
No. Evelyn, dear, I'm worried that if you go on questioning me at such a pitch and at this hour of the morning, my eggs are going to over-scramble. And if they do over-scramble, that means I've got to start again from fresh. And that means that Ham and I are both going to be late for our lecture at Professor Marx's mortuary. Are you lecturing at the morgue? Yes, we are. Talk about captive audiences. Oh, no, the staff, Evelyn, dear, the staff. And I'm worried that if we are late, old Marx will punish us by carting us off to lunch at that ghastly Arabian place of his. Oh, by the way, how did the Chinese go? Mmm, super. Yeah, yeah, you got away with the menus, all right? Yes. Good. We marched in, the head waiter muttered something savage in Cantonese, and I said, thanks, and we fled to our table. I don't like this, Adam. No? Look at the slants, they're rigid, too rigid. Look at the scrawl. I've known psychotics who wrote more evenly. This guy could mean business. Yes, he could. Well, didn't Jenna... Yes, but... yes, he did. And I told him that I was perfectly safe while I got you two around. Now, come on. Egg and a half. Thanks and a half. No. No? Ham? No, I've eaten. Strength. Vitamins, vitamins, whatever you call them. Come on, you may need them. But you are worried, aren't you, Adam? Well, of course I'm worried. I'm worried about whoever wrote that note. I'm worried about two people that I don't know, or don't think I know. It gives me a nasty feeling, too. Oh, oh. oh, poor pussycat. There, prize. Jimmy? I'm looking for Mr. Strange, Mr. Adam Strange. He's out, I'm afraid, at a lecture. Can I take a message? No, thank you. Well, I could give you a number you could reach him at. Um, have you got a bit of paper? Yes, it's fine. Thanks, I haven't got a pencil either. You'd rather wait. You're very welcome to eat. Uh, 
<laughs> Have a good lunch, Your Thank you. Antrobus? Yes. You knew him? Across the courtroom, yes. Where'd this happen? Outside the court. He was on his way to lunch. And the gun? Ballistics is checking the bullet. It was probably fired from the gun stolen last night. <laughs> probably. Probably. Why are you being so careful with your words still, General? Of course it was the same gun. Look at this. Next to the prosecutor, then you, Adam Strange. It's the same paper. Same paper, same handwriting. What was it? Pinned to the body? Shoved in his pocket. <sighs> Judge killed, no mention of a prosecutor, and me again. Star billing. Well, at least it's narrowing down, isn't it? Now, in some case, some trial that I was mixed up in, involving Mr. Justice Antrobus. Was there more than one case involving you and him? Many more than one. Yes, I'll have to check my files when I get home. Yes, Brinkley. First list from prisons in and around London, sir. Men released in the last few months. Have a look, Strange. Uh, Carter, knew a Carter once. Andrew? No, I don't think so. Delgado. Familiar? Vaguely, yes. Have a look. Brinkley, you'd better check whether Mr. Antrobus sentenced any of these men. Sir, here's a name now. Hanson, James Hanson. That name is familiar. I can't exactly place it, but I'm sure I knew a Hanson once. When was he released? Yesterday. Yes, and served seven years. You'd better check up on this address. Yeah, right away. No, I never met Mr. Hanson. He's been away in Latin America for many years, you see. I see. Uh, who lived here then, Mrs. Rogers? Oh, his wife Mary did. And little Michael, of course, before he went off to boarding school last year. Your police, aren't you? Yes. Wasn't that in America, was it? No. Prison? Prison. Oh, I guessed. We all of us guessed. And she's such a sweet girl. You don't get many like her, not like Mary, so we... Mrs. Macy in number two and the Andersons upstairs. Even Dora Neely in number four, who'd sooner talk about you than drink her tea. We all of us let Mary Hanson think, we believe. When did she move out, Mrs. Rogers? Day before yesterday. I don't know where she went. No, she didn't leave any address. She... Yes? Well, she did come by yesterday, early evening. That was just to pay me back rent and pick up some letters. And you've no idea where she went? No. I'm sorry. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Rogers. Mary Hanson. I'll check her out further in Hanson's prison record. All right, and I'll go home and look through my old files. Right. Come in. Adam back yet? No, he just phoned. He's on his way. I thought you'd be with him. Well, I was in the middle of my lecture. He got a message and he left. Evelyn, I know you're the great one with the oils and paints and a daughter Picasso always dreamed of having, but is this any time to sit there drawing? Correction. Sketching from memory. Where were you? I went back to see Mrs. Rogers, Jimmy. Oh, yeah? I swear, Jimmy. Well, to get another can of beans. Well, I thought there might be another letter from Mike and I... So, what? I can't stay here in this place all day. All day with you wandering around with a gun. Oh, haven't you got it anymore, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, I've got it. I've used it. Jimmy. Only once so far. Jimmy, no. Oh, now, shut up. Jimmy! Oh, shut up! Now, where did you go? Help me, Mary. If you went to the police and I find out about it, That'll be the end of everything between us. Can't you see that? Aren't you going to help me? Help you? No one ever helped me. I can't remember once, once in my whole life. Help you? Do you remember her, Adam? Oh, I don't know, Evie. I mean, so many years, so many faces. This file's no good. Give me the one for 61. Could, could you 
be uh, Hans's daughter or his wife. Well, yeah. I suppose she could be, but I don't remember a woman at the trial at all. Well, the important thing, Evie, is that note. You did absolutely wonderfully, Bert. I simply pinched it from her notebook. Yeah, but you see, it exactly matches the other note, and that's vital. It shows we're on the right track. It was a mere nothing. I learned from masters. And for once, my masters are letting me in on what it's all about. Hello, here we are, here we are. Crown versus Hansen. What does the B and E stand for? B and E, breaking an entry. And the V there with v the asterisk? Violent, yes. Yes, goodness, I remember. Hansen broke into a jewellery store one night. The guard tried to grab him. Hansen went berserk, half killed the guard, and I helped track Hansen down. Yeah, this is the one. And the judge presiding at Hansen's trial was at Antrobus? Yes, Antrobus. And the prosecuting counsel? Churchill. Richard Churchill. How could I have forgotten him? Yes, we know. Brinkley's already on to it. We're tracking him down. Strange, this Churchill, he's uh, switched to private practice. This Churchill, Jenner, should have switched himself right out of the practice of law. He's a menace. To himself and me right now, and to James Hansen seven years ago. To Hansen? Hansen was a sick young man. He was terribly sick. And during the trial, I begged Churchill, I pleaded with him, to recommend that Hansen be sent somewhere for psychiatric treatment, for help. Not just carted off to jail somewhere, but no, he wouldn't play. Got his eye on convictions, headlines, big career ahead in politics, he hoped. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> Fortunately, not many did. Strange, according to this, Hansen didn't exactly act the madman in prison. Model prisoner, blood donor, exemplary conduct, the lot. Are you sure it's Hansen? Aren't you, by now? Rules and regulations here, I'm not paid to be sure of anything, just that I can do the job. Any luck, Brinkley? I don't get it, sir. I've been trying this Churchill's office and home number. No answer it either. Then I tried the office next to his. The secretary answered. She said she was sure that someone was in there. Are we interrupting anything? Mr. Atkins and I, we were just practicing a few steps. Does Mr. Churchill always supply his staff with wine in the afternoons? I do, when he's on holiday. Where's he gone to? Why? Milan. Milano. When? His plane leaves 45 minutes, I hope. Sudden decision, this one? Rather. Uh, Mr. Atkins, is it? And you work in the mail room? I'd suggest you get back there. Brinkley, stay here. Yes, sir. Are you a cop, too? That's right. Do cops drink champagne? Only on payday. There's some left, if you'd like a bit. Not right now, thanks. Suit yourself. <sighs> Please proceed to channel number three for Scotland and immigration clearance. Mr. Churchill. Yes, that's right. Inspector Jenner here in Scotland Yard. I'm Adam Strange. Oh, yes, of course, Strange. It's been a long time. Seven years, to be exact, the Hanson case. Hanson? James Hanson, a young thief you put away. Young fellow from Surrey. As I recall, you helped put him away, too. You too, Strange. Your memory's bad. I pegged him as ill. Did you? Well, the jury didn't agree with you, did they? Not at the judge. Antrobus. Antrobus. Antrobus is dead. He was shot down today. Was he? Why are you pulling out? Did you know you were next on the list? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Is he the one that's ill? Answer, Mr. Churchill. Did Hanson warn you? Did he write? Phone you? What? Come on, man, give us some clue. You're not the only one involved in this. I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is I've got a plane to catch. I'm off on holiday. I've got a plane to catch. Churchill! 
do you want me to arrange so that you don't take off on this holiday? But that you're made to stick around here in London for the next few days instead? Hanson said something to me the day he was sentenced. Something threatening. I chose to ignore it all these years. But then earlier today, when I heard about Antropus, I checked with the prison. I heard he'd been let out. I thought I'd, I'd better get off. Is that it? That's it. I don't know anything more. Good trip, Mr. Churchill. I'd like to see the governor, if you don't mind. Mr. Churchill? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm afraid he's not in. Oh, where is he? In Italy, or on his way. Italy? Well, can I have your name, sir? I'll be talking to Mr. Churchill later on tonight by phone. I can give him a message then. Will that do? Sir? Hanson? James Hanson? Got to see you for a moment. Oh! 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 I see. And there's nothing more you can tell us. Your associate, Mr. Brinkley. Will he be all right? Yes, we think he'll be all right, but uh, we won't know for a while. Well, do you think I could go now, please? Yes, of course. Uh, matron at the desk will escort you home, if you'd like. Thanks. Well, that leaves Hanson with only one target, doesn't it? Me. Yes. And I'd suggest strongly... Let me suggest something strongly, Jenna. You want to nab him, and nab him quick, leave it to me. Me and the wife. Hanson's? Hanson's. Where are you going to find her? I'll find her. <laughs> I'd better, hadn't I? I don't know where Mary's moved to, I told you. Why all this, Mr. Strange? Why must you hound the poor girl? Trying to build herself a new life, isn't she? Why can't you leave her be? It's for her own good, Mrs. Rogers. Please believe me. Well, I'm no spy. No blabber. Why don't you go to Dora Neely in number four? She's the one who talks. Oh, I've spoken to her, and she tells me that during all these years, there's been nobody closer to Mary than you. It's to do with her husband, this. Making trouble for her, is he? Day or two after he comes out of that place, that prison. Yes, there is trouble. I don't know where she went. I wish I did. Oh, there is Mary. Yes. And the little boy? Young Michael. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> she brought me this in hospital last year when I was in there with Miss Stones. <laughs> oh, really? She brought me some rosary beads, too. I I'm not a Catholic, of course, but she said, well, now, never you mind. You can always use it for a necklace when you go dancing in your long dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a good girl, Mary. <laughs> oh, she jokes about it, of course, but she's a very religious girl. She goes to church every Sunday. Which goes to communion every day, 4.30 on the dot. Mm. Nothing can make her miss her wafer, she says. Do you know where she goes to church? Oh, no, I, I don't know, really. There's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of Catholic churches in this neighbourhood. It's one of those, I guess. Or somewhere near the boys' school, just outside London somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mrs Rogers, this photograph... Yes. Yes, it does sound like an unusual hour for Holy Communion. Well, are there any other churches in the It's Hyde Park, Marble Arch back there. Yes, but not a Sunday. You see, there's no activity at Speaker's Corner. Oh, great, we're just great. It, uh, just a minute, Ham. Here, look at, look at the little boy here, his blazer. That yeah, school jacket. That's right, school mm -hmm. jacket. But there's something on it, on the pocket there. There's a badge, an insignia of some sort. Can you make it out? Yeah, barely. Looks like a corner of a star. Yes, it could be. And, uh, and what's this? It beats me, Adam. The school I went to was called PS 137. We had an American flag in the auditorium, a double portrait of Lincoln and Washington in the principal's office, a few poems in the boys' toilet, and that was it. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. It's a bird's wing. That's it. It's a star and a bird. PS 138? Now, if only we could trace that school somehow. 
Okay. Well, there must be outfits where they make these insignia, these emblems, and, and they keep books and records of them. All right, I'll check and get it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I tried all four churches in the area, and their communions are all in the morning. So then I phoned the diocese and explained the problem, and they said they'd check and ring me back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, come on, look at this. Now, what do you make of that? Look, here, on his pocket. It's not Churchill. It's all going wrong. Oh, I want to sleep. <laughs> oh, who is he? I, I've never seen him before. I don't know. Hanson, give me, give me the... No, I, I knew he was coming to get me. What else could I... What else could I do? Do... Oh, it's not Churchill. It's not, not, not strange. Oh, who is he? I, I don't know him. I, I didn't want to know him. Oh, let me sleep. Let me sleep. Thank you very much, Sister Therese. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Bye-bye. St. Monica's Church, Hampstead Gardens, Daily Communion, 4.30. Oh, well done, well done. You're a good girl, Evie, a good girl. Adam. Yeah? I know I've probably said it about 45 times in the last year, and I do hate to be boring, but will you please be, be careful? careful? Yes, I will. I'll look both ways before I cross the street, and I won't accept candy from strange gentlemen, all right? Mrs. Hanson, Mary. Yes. I'm Adam Strange. You came and tried to see me. I wasn't in. I'm sorry. But we've come together finally, haven't we? Mary, where is Jimmy? Where is he? He's sleeping. Having nightmares. Trying to claw his way out of nightmares. Where, Mary? I can't tell you that. You know what he's done? Yes. You know what he's planning to do? Yes. Mary, you've got to help stop him. I've tried. Believe that, I've tried. He's a sick man, Mr. Strange, my Jimmy. Body and mind. So sick. I came to see you, yes. I nearly went to the police. I don't know how many times the past few days. Yes, but... in sickness and in health, Mr. Strange, that day, and the father said, in sickness and in health. And I said, I swore, yes, in front of God. And that's the way it must be, to the end, whatever that may be. It's bound to close in on him sooner or later. You know that, don't you, Mary? Yes, I know that. But you'll stick with him, still. I vowed for him, for me, for our children, our unborn babies. Where's Michael? Away. Doesn't Jimmy want to see him? He does, and he will. Will you trust him with your son? He's his father. Will you trust him with the life of anyone in his condition? Mary, they'll close in. 
And no matter what happens or doesn't happen to me, the police will be on to him. And he's still got that gun. Will you trust him then? Will the vows still be valid then? When... Stop it. Leave me alone. Oh, soon Savior, help me. He's here, and, and the police are here with him, and they are here, aren't they? No. He came with him to follow me, to trap me. No, Mary. You swear that? I swear it. You're alone? Mary, you tell me where Jimmy is, and I'll see that he's helped. He needs help, Mary. He needs it. You know that. And he'll get it. I swear that to you. In another prison? In hospital. But they should have sent him the first time. Where I pleaded that they sent him. You remember that? You must remember it. Mary. You want to help him, don't you? Oh, sweet Amy, help me. Mary. You mustn't follow me. I've got to be alone with him for a while. And you let her go. You let her get away. Yes, I did. Why, for heaven's sake? Because she met it a condition and I agreed. She'll ring us Jenna in an hour. That's what she said. And she'll hand James Hansen to us on a platter. She wants to be alone with him. She just wants to be with him, and then she'll phone us. Anyway, there's nothing to stop your men fighting him first, is there? Yo, ma'am. I got the school. Two birds and a star. Sandrum Academy, Keat Street, NW3. Oh, oh great. That's well done. I, I don't think we're going to want this information now. Oh, no. Of course not. We'll simply sit here and wait for the telephone to ring. An hour, Jenna. Just one hour. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's well over an hour, Strange. She's not phoning you or anyone. Evening, will you stand by here, dear? We'll check in with you on the phone. Ham, you've got the address of that school? Keith Street, NW3. Come on. Okay, had your supper? Yes, I finished five minutes ago, like every night. <laughs> it's only good. Come on, let's let's have a little chat, shall we? Come and sit in this chair, will you? Are you friends with Michael? No, not really. I know Michael's father. Were you away with him? No, I knew him a long time ago. I see. I was sorry to see Michael go this afternoon. I was his best friend, you know. I know. But there's one thing that we don't know, and we thought you might be able to help us. You see, this gentleman and I, we very much want to talk to Mr. Hanson. And we thought that, uh, because Michael's your best friend, that he might have told you where they were going. Well, he said he'd write from there. Yes, but where? The cabin he was going to, of course. Oh, cabin, eh? What, in the country? Yes, they were going straight there this afternoon. 
Do you know where in the country? Yes. Where, son? Where there are a lot of tall hills he could climb. That's what Michael kept saying over and over. Outside of Abington, of course. Dad used to tell me when I was about your age. He used to say, see these hills here, Jim? These hills, they're special hills. They're extraordinary hills. Because they used to be palisades where the warriors and the kings used to, hey, get out of it, used to fight each other to the death in the battles they had in them days. Whew. You're heavy. Mum said they were just mounds of grassy earth. Pretty, but just mounds, she said. <laughs> your mum. Can I go and play? Oh, you have to ask your mum. Mum, may I play? Be careful, then. <laughs> Off you go. Tuck your scarf in. Do you hear me? Tuck your scarf in. He's fine. Yes. It's good here, isn't it? Yes. We well, made it, Mary. General area. Could be anywhere around here. Yeah, we'd better split. You stay here, please. Why? Why stay? You're not armed, are you, strange? No. Stay. Stay. What are you thinking? I was remembering a wedding. You were beautiful. I was happy. Are you now? Again? No. You'll get used to it. You'll, you'll get to like it here soon. You'll see. Will there be time, Jimmy? Time? Mary, in seven years you forget time. Do you? Mm. I've been seven years, too. Seven years in my own prison. I didn't forget it. I tried. Spitting at it, stamping it away each day. Like a ugly cockroach. Time's time, Jimmy. It passes. Sometimes too slow, and sometimes too fast, but you can't stop it passing. Strange! You told him. No! You told him! No! She didn't tell me anything, Hanson. OK. Well, OK, she didn't tell you anything. No, not Mary, not my loving wife. But all right, all right, you're here now. I was looking for you. And you came to me, did you? Well, what do they call that, then? Fate? Is that the word? We're not armed. No, that, Hanson. Oh, you're not. No, and you're not armed either, are you? Your gun, that gun that you shot two men with today, it's over there in your coat pocket, isn't it, Hanson? Leave it be. It's over. It's not over, Strange. I tried to end it. I tried to cut it off. But you came. Oh, yes, you made sure you came. You hounded me. You hounded me like you did before. Well, nothing's changed. Jimmy. Shut up. Jimmy. Shut up. Why shut her up? Why not let her scream it? Or oh, don't you want the boy to hear? Is that it? He's going to hear it when that shot rings out, isn't he, Hanson? Two shots. Two shots are going to ring out, Strange. You're wrong, Hanson. You get me and my friend here, he'll get you. Rush you as you're firing, grab your legs, and down, Hanson, down. And there's police all around here. Just one shot, just one, and they'll all come running. And the boy, he'll come running too. Oh, is that what you want? Is that it? Jimmy, please. Go on then, Hanson. A few more steps, a quick reach into that pocket there, and you'll have done it. Done what you've really been planning all these years. You'll make your father's mark on your son. Oh, yeah, he'll remember it. My dad, he'll say, 
There was this day by this cabin. I was playing around, just playing around, and suddenly I heard it, and I looked, and, and there he was, with a gun in his hand, holding a gun. You see, he was very ill, my father. And they came to help him, to help. But he didn't want any part of that. No, no, not my father. And I want to tell you, oh, how proud I am of that memory. I want to tell you how grand, how righteous, how just, how brave he was that day. Daddy! Huh? Go on, handsome. Make him proud of you. Go away. Go on, man. Go on, go away. Give him a memory to last him all his life. Go away. Get out of here. Leave me alone! Ah! Hold it, Ham. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it, honest. It's all right, Daddy. Why are you crying? Because I love you. I love you. I love you. Honest, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't cry, Daddy. Men don't cry. <laughs> Thank you. 